Let's talk about Europe, right? So when when you think about when one thinks about Europe in this chip war, um, of course ASML comes to mind. But does Europe have a broader game plan here than just ASML? Well, I think that the challenge in talking about Europe is that there are different players in Europe. There's the European Union as a whole, which has a strategy. There's the key member states like Germany, like the Netherlands, like France, uh, and they have different interests uh, and therefore different strategies. So if you're the Netherlands right now, you have both ASML, which is the most important uh, machine tool maker in Europe, but you also have a series of, of very successful chip makers like NXP um, who are, are already doing quite well. And so the Netherlands doesn't feel a need to dramatically change chip policy because it's Correct. succeeding. Correct. If you're don't, Germany, don't fix what's not broken. Correct. Well, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. If, if you're Germany, however, you have just survived uh, two years of debilitating chip shortages, which have hurt your largest industry, the auto industry. Auto industry. And so, that's right. And so as Germany thinks about semiconductors, it's thinking less about semiconductors and more about the cars that are big consumers of semiconductors. And so a lot of German chip policy is actually derivative of auto policy. It's a desire to strengthen the supply chain that produces cars. And so that's very different from the way, for example, the Netherlands thinks about the chip industry. So Netherlands is more of a supplier of technology and inputs into the global supply chain, whereas you're seeing the German sector is more to make sure that it doesn't get adversely affected by disruptions in supply. What about France? France has has similar incentives to Germany. There are big uh, French car makers that were disrupted, uh, aviation firms that were disrupted during the chip shortages. Uh, and so in France as well, uh, the investment that's happened has been partly about technological leadership, but much more about supply chain resilience. I'm gonna, it's an, maybe an obvious question, but I wanna ask you it nevertheless. If TSMC's monopoly is such a cause of geopolitical worry today, why is ASML's monopoly on the equipment side not as much of a geopolitical worry? Well, you know, it's interesting. I was uh, speaking with some uh, some uh, people from the Netherlands recently. They said, you know, people don't often realize, but the the primary ASML facility in Eindhoven is only 70 meters above sea level. So as sea levels rise, perhaps we should be worried about ASML's production too. Um, but I, I think the fact that ASML's uh, key supply chains are in Europe and in the US, their key manufacturing facilities are in the Netherlands, in Germany, in uh, Connecticut, in the US, in California, um, gives both European and US policymakers a fair amount of confidence that there won't be geopolitical disruptions to the, uh, the ASML supply chain. There have been accidents. Last year, uh, there was a fire in an ASML facility that caused some disruptions. But the type of catastrophic um, a disruption that one can imagine around China and Taiwan is much harder to imagine in a supply chain focused on the Netherlands, Germany, and the United States. 